What is up, everybody? And welcome back to another NBA 2K18 My Career Game. The New York Knicks winning streak is still going on, in case you were wondering. As Porzingis and Tice both take a stab at the rim, both of them miss early on. The winning streak still over 20-plus games. Here's Danny Green knocking down a three at the top of the key. Spurs up early in the game. We will see if the San Antonio Spurs have what it takes to take down this long Knicks winning streak. You know Greg Popovich has some sort of scheme up his sleeve. Here's LaMarcus knocking down the mid-range jumper. LaMarcus and Porzingis both have that in their arsenal. And LaMarcus can play pretty good defense as well. Stops Tice and Porzingis both off the rough starts. But LaMarcus with the lazy pass. Tice gets it. Finds Carmelo who knocks down the mid-range jumper. The last game we played... We probably should have lost that game. That sh probably should have been the end of the winning streak. We were down double digits in the fourth quarter against the Bulls, just playing lazy basketball, and we somehow found a way to come back and win that game. This just seems like one of those magical winning streaks where, like, even when it should be over, we just find ways to win games as we find Porzingis. So that's Lamarcus sagging off, and Chris Stops is going to make him pay. The Spurs, of course, on paper, don't look like the scariest team because it's basically just Kawhi Leonard and, you know, some Lamarcus Aldridge post fadeaways and a bunch of old guys as Tice gets the end one what a play over Manu but at the same time quite Leonard enough is just more than good enough to win a lot of basketball games and because of that the Spurs are probably going to be good they've already been good for the past 20 years in the NBA they might be good for the next 15 to 20 years because Kawhi Leonard is just one of those kind of guys that fits the Spurs system to a T just like Tim Duncan doesn't say much just goes out and wins games great two-way player but thankfully for us Kawhi is going to be clamping Carmelo, so we don't got to worry about Kawhi switching on to us. Tony Parker's our matchup for the most part as Kawhi misses the free throw. Here we are running. We see Melo wide open and Carmelo from mid able to get it to go. Great thing about this Knicks team, we have shooters all around, especially in our starting lineup. All five guys can hit that mid-range jumper. You know, Melo can definitely hit it. Melo is one of the best shooters on the floor. Porzingis has a deadly mid-range and even our center, Hernan Gomez. You'd be surprised at how cash this dude is from mid-range, so... Now our team pretty good in that sense. Pretty good free throw shooters. Besides Joakim Noah, he's absolutely horrific. I think that dude's literally shooting 30% on the season as Denny Tice finding his groove right now. Got 14 first half points on fire. Sizing up Tony Parker and gonna find Porzingis deep in the paint. Somehow didn't get called for an 0-3 right there. And Porzingis just gonna use his height. Well, Mark is a pretty good defender, but you can't defend 7-3 all the time. Especially when 7-3 is flying at the rim. Via a Denny Tice lob as Porzingis is going to get that to go. I kind of came in there. I was like, hey, you need any help? He's like, nope, I got this. I'm okay with Kristaps trying to take over the game. That's fine. By me. Yes. Hernan Gomez somehow catches that lob. That wasn't the best lob situation, but I tried it anyways. We're up double digits against the Spurs, but of course, game's not over. The Spurs, they play hard for four quarters no matter who's on the court. Even if it's Rudy Gay, Manu Ginobili, and Patty Mills. You can't sleep on the defense of Patty Mills and Manu Ginobili. Oh, but Mills gets crossed and Tice throws the oop again. This three is off. Got to keep him on every once in a while, but unfortunately, that shot does not go. Here's Manu. Manu, the ageless wonder, finds LaMarcus, and we... That's the kind of foul I'm talking about. Earlier, I was saying that you called... The, you know, the fouls are really soft in this game, as that was definitely a layup attempt that accidentally turned into a jumper because 2K, but... um. Yeah, those are the kind of fouls I want. Not the fouls where you touch them, it's an and one. I want to hit the dude if I'm committing a foul. I want it worth my money. That was not a foul right there. That was a clean block by LaMarcus Aldridge. Kawhi gets it to go, but he's also down. Kawhi, oh no. Kawhi Leonard. Apparently, this is something 2K patched very recently that a lot of people are getting ankle injuries in my career. And if you guys have been keeping up with the series, this is the second superstar that's gotten injured. The second game in a row someone's gotten injured. Jerry and Grant had an ankle injury last game. Now it's Kawhi Leonard. So these are crazy. And they're happening to really good players. It happened to Harden before. And now Kawhi Leonard is out for the rest of the game. That's not like this game is over. This game is just getting started. The Spurs with a chance to tie the game up. And Joffrey Laverne ties it. And now they have the lead as they go in the corner to Porzingis. Oh, Porzingis normally cash in that corner, but he's not able to get it to go. And suddenly the Spurs have all the momentum. Green for three. Bang! Danny Green trying to end the winning streak of the Knicks. Here's Tice scooping it up and in. And that's the first points of the second half for Danny Tice. Look at that shooting percentage. If you're looking for a reason why the Spurs came back, it's this guy right here. We can't 
can hit a bucket to save our life. Danny Tice now 33% shooting. 1 for 11 in the second half. When your leader is not shooting well, you're going to lose games. That's just the way it is. And you know what? Sometimes you have bad shooting nights. We've been able to avoid that for the most part. But right now, it's happening at a very bad time. In the fourth quarter of a close game against the Spurs. Oh, but Jimmy Wells with a big time three keeping us in the game. Running a little pick and roll. Hernan Gomez rolling to the rim. You would think we would have a field day against Tony Parker, but... The Spurs just had the right defensive answer to keep us contained. And on the offensive end, a bad double team leaves Tony Parker open. And Parker has turned into a pretty good three-point shooter. Tice able to get by that time. One of the rare buckets for Denny Tice. Normally scoring in the 20s. Not even there as we find Herman Gomez rolling to the rim. At this point, I'm turning into a full-on facilitator. My teammates are wide. Oh my, what the? Why did he not shoot that ball? Laverne had it instead. Danny Green is blocked by Porzingis in a tie game under a minute to go once again pick and roll Hernan Gomez oh what a scoop over LaMarcus gets it to go and we are so close to escaping out here with the victory without Kawhi Leonard on the court that has definitely helped us because if Kawhi was on the court there's a pretty good chance Kawhi's hitting some dagger buckets right now the Spurs cannot buy a bucket they don't know who to go to LaMarcus probably the guy we'll see what happens Rudy Gay has checked in for Kawhi here's Tony Parker pulling and hitting Tony Parker ties the game with 29 seconds left in Tice's eye ball four and Gomez goes out of bounds and it's a turnover the Spurs get the ball with 25 seconds left and they called the timeout. They may choose to kill as much clock as possible. Either win the game or send it to overtime. The shot clock is not turned off. But it might as well be. Because there's only a one second difference. Here's a double team. Leaving Laverne open. But the Spurs look in no rush to get the ball in the hoop. Or at least attempt to get the ball in the hoop. Parker killing that clock down. 10 seconds left. Ball moving around. Laverne to Danny Green. They're looking for Ulrich in the post. He's got it. Here's LaMarcus spinning for the win. Pump faking. And. And no good Lamarcus misses and the game goes to overtime they use the entire 24 seconds on the shot clock but Lamarcus just he wanted it too bad he was being triple team and he still put it up that was not really the best design play Lamarcus probably had to go earlier than he should have but who am I to really judge anything we're in overtime Thankfully for us, because the Spurs have all the momentum right now as Kyle Quinn gets the rebound off the game miss. Here's Denny Tice, the four general, looking at his options. Carmelo step back, silky smooth. Melo starts OT with a jumper. Here's Lamarcus Aldridge, pump thinking, showing a fake. Oh, look at Kristaps, though. He's well disciplined, blocks it. There's a foul. Porzingis cannot believe it. That looked clean, but there was a foul beforehand. Once again, trying to get the pick and roll working. Not Getting buckets, finding teammates instead. Bang! Chris stops on the other end, putting that foul behind him and knocking down the three. The lead right back in our possession. Lamarcus sizing up. Chris stops, driving straight. Adam block again, but it's a foul again. Chris stops again. Cannot believe it. But once again, on the offensive end. Oh, Porzingis is there to capitalize. Alley oop to the 7 3 unicorn. That's wild, man. That's something you don't see every day. Here's Tony Parker. Blocked again. But there's a foul again. The fifth on Denny Tice. These guys are unblockable because apparently if you block them, there's a foul beforehand. As Denny Tice on the offensive end. Throwing another lob. This time, Kylo Quinn, the recipient. Back and forth affair in overtime. Trying to make sure we do not foul out of this game. Our team needs us. Five seconds left in the shot clock. Up by one. Tice to Kristaps. And Porzingis with seven points in overtime he is putting the team on his back right now Denny Ty is struggling Chris stops stepping up to the plate but we need to get a couple of defensive stops Parker doesn't get it but he gets the board finds Laverne and he gets it over Kylo Quinn back to a one point game we get a bucket right here it's not the dagger Tony Parker ankle breaker oh what a play Tice the Porzingis Chris stops is an animal unbelievable and Denny Tice with the ankle breaker in a clutch situation man oh man these young New York Knicks are so fun to watch but this game is not over yet there is potential for double overtime if the Spurs hit a three we'll see what they've got who is the big guy is it Rudy Gay they go to Lamarcus in the post they don't really need it to but Lamarcus wants it takes it but will not get it Porzingis gets fouled not in the bonus yet and 
normally don't want to be in the bonus but when you're down you definitely would rather not be in the situation we have to foul again a little bit more time goes off we're going to know why we really only need to make one free throw to spurs out of timeouts then he ties makes the first one struggling from the field but making the clutch free throw when the team needs them got both of them to go down by five got to inbound this one quickly ball moving around they need to get a shot up green no good and the rebound to tice turnover doesn't matter what happens here the game is over the knicks went on the road in overtime thanks to the Kristaps takeover that was pretty special what porzingis did in overtime tonight because I'll be honest, I didn't have it tonight. We just, I mean, I don't know what the hell was going on. I just couldn't buy a bucket to save my life. You guys had a Styles 1 for 11 in the fourth quarter at one point. But, hey, man, that's, then you wouldn't think of the Knicks as having a good supporting cast, but Chris Stops and Carmelo, they get the job done. So leave a like in the video if you guys enjoyed it. Subscribe for more NBA 2K18 My Career Games. The winning streak somehow continues to live on, and I'll catch you guys next time.